Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the all new Dell XPS 15, the 7590 model, although you wouldn't really know just by looking at it. From the outside, it's nearly identical to last year's one. The only way I can tell is that you've got the webcam on the top bezel now, and also my old one has loads of grease marks on the palm rest. So I've gone for pretty much the top spec model of the new Dell, with a 4K OLED screen, Core i9 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and the GTX 1650 graphics card. Oh, and I also bought the uh, non-OLED version, the LCD one, because why buy one when you can get two for twice the price? Hmm. For this one, we're looking at about 2,500 pounds, or around $2,650, which is an awful lot of money. Although, I guess when you consider that the similar equivalent spec MacBook Pro 15 is actually around a grand more than this, this starts to look relatively affordable, relatively. By the way, if you want to see more tech and lots of behind the scenes photos, it would be amazing if you could follow me on Instagram at the tech chap. So there's definitely a feeling of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, this is now the fourth year we've had the same, or near enough the same design. Same keyboard, same touchpad, same ports, including an SD card reader, HDMI 2 and Thunderbolt 3. But the good news is they have moved that webcam. So it's no longer looking up your nose. It's on the top bezel in a normal place, not down there at the bottom. So if you're doing lots of video conferencing Skype calls, then obviously this has fixed pretty much the biggest design issue we've all had with the Dell XPSs for years now. So that is good to see. There's still no Windows Hello Face Unlock, but you do get a fingerprint reader built into the power button, which is pretty handy. So a fresh new look or maybe a bigger touchpad would have been nice, but I still think it looks good. It's still got an understated premium feel to it, and it is still incredibly compact for a 15 inch laptop. But most importantly, I still think the keyboard and the touchpad are among the best out there. So the big upgrades this year, aside from the webcam, are the new 9th gen processors, i5, i7, or i9, NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics, that's up from the 1050 Ti last year, an upgraded Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, which actually has fixed all my complaints about connection issues from before, and also we have a new screen option. I've always been a big fan of the screens on the XPS laptops because for, I don't know, creator laptops like this, you want power, you want portability, and you want a good display, particularly the 4K one. But now we actually have three options. You've got a matte, full HD, non-touch one, a 4K glossy LCD, or a 4K glossy OLED. There's a brand new OLED entry into the mix, which makes things a little bit trickier when it comes to deciding what model you want. But I did actually spend all of last weekend making a dedicated OLED versus LCD video. So if you wanna find out everything there is to know about the screens, then go and watch that after this. But to cut a long story short, they really are both stunning screens. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either. But the OLED does have significantly better contrast, which means you get much deeper blacks, smoother color gradients, as you can see here. It also handles reflections a little bit better, and it's slightly more color accurate on the DCI-P3 color gamut. And overall, it just looks a bit more vivid and eye-catching. The LCD is brighter though, it's got slightly better viewing angles. It also gets the Dell Premier Color app pre-installed, which lets you change color profile, which for some reason you just can't get on the OLED model. And it's also a touchscreen. So you basically have to ask yourself two questions. Number one, is battery life more important to you than the screen or having a really high res screen? If it is, then you should go for the matte full HD version because you get roughly twice the battery. But I think most people actually should go for the 4K. You get a slightly nicer design with a flush glass bezel and it does look stunning. It's more color accurate, obviously sharper. I love the 4K screen on this. But then question two is, should you go for LCD or OLED? Well, to be honest, I think most people would be better off with the normal LCD. The touchscreen is handy, and if I'm honest, even side by side, it doesn't look that much different to the OLED. For me though, as someone who watches and edits YouTube videos all day long, the slightly nicer colors and more accurate DCI-P3 gamma is nice to have, so I'm probably gonna stick with the OLED, although we'll have to wait and see if there's any long-term burn-in issue, but so far, I've not had any problems. A quick tip though, if you are thinking of going for the OLED model, because I was this close to returning it because of screen flickering, it was driving me mad. But the good news is actually there is a quick fix. Just jump into the Intel graphics control panel and turn off display self refresh. That's literally it and it completely fixed the flickering issue. As for battery life, a one hour YouTube test 
actually showed no difference between the OLED and the LCD. In fact, an hour of just general use, so Spotify, Google Docs, a bit of Lightroom, you know, normal stuff, used 18%. Both laptops come with Windows Dark theme enabled by default, as darker backgrounds actually help save battery on the OLED. So I've been getting about five and a half hours on average before I needed to find a charger. So not great then, but if you do want better battery, go for the i5 or i7 processor and the full HD screen. That way you'll get probably double the battery life of this. But speaking of things to avoid, you see this little label down here, Core i9, do not by the i9 processor. I'm so frustrated with this. Save some money and get better performance and go for the i7, seriously. Unless you're happy to undervolt the CPU and maybe if you have extra padding in your trousers for all the heat this thing gives off. I mean, I measured 50 degrees Celsius from the fan exhaust and 43 on the keyboard. So apparently foolishly thinking I'd get better performance by going with the top end chip, I spec'd my XPS with the i9-9980HK. Eight cores, 16 threads, and a peak five gigahertz turbo boost. Now this is a seriously powerful chip, and versus last year's model with an i7, I know it's not an exact like for like, but it's the closest I have. In Geekbench 4, the new XPS with the i9 was 20% faster in multi-core and nearly 30% faster in Cinebench R20. So on paper and in benchmarks, it's definitely a step up from last year's six core chip, as you would expect. But there's a problem, a big one, and it's throttling. Even last year's XPS with the i9 had throttling issues, but somehow I thought maybe it would be fixed. But then again, we do have pretty much the same design here, so alas, not. Don't get me wrong, this thing is really fast. The specs, the super fast NVMe SSD, everything is really quick and responsive. But when you're rendering a video or doing anything CPU intensive for more than a few minutes, the processor gets very hot, regularly peaking at 100 degrees C. So underneath the laptop gets crazy hot, like you couldn't even touch it for more than a few seconds kind of hot. I bought this mainly for video editing, and when a five minute 4K video that took six minutes, 24 seconds to export on last year's model with an i7 takes eight and a half minutes on the new ninth gen one, well, to be honest, I feel like I've wasted my money. And that's not even the worst of it. Sometimes the export time will go from five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, up and up as it throttles performance to stay cool. Now, to be fair, you can always undervolt the processor yourself, although I wouldn't recommend this for most people unless you're quite techie and know what you're doing because you can damage the laptop. But either using Intel software or Throttle Stop, which is the one I use, I actually undervolted my i9 by 120 millivolts. The undervolted i9 was actually 15% faster than the regular i9 in Cinebench. It took a minute off my render times and my temperatures never went above 95 degrees. So your mileage may vary, and this is just from my experience. It does depend on what apps you're using and how hard you're pushing this. But this is supposed to be for prosumers. The fact that they offer an i9 option clearly is sort of aimed at those who are doing more intensive tasks. And so then if it just throttles after five minutes anyway, then yeah, unless you're happy to undervolt it, stay clear of the i9, go for the i7. The good news though is the graphics card is a nice step up. The GTX 1650 is around 30% faster than last year's 1050 Ti, so in Overwatch at Full HD and with high settings, I average 70 FPS. Although I'd recommend going for the Full HD model and the i5 processor if you're going to be mainly using this for gaming. As for the RAM, it comes with either 16, 32 or on the crazy top spec one, 64 gigs. I think for most people you should go with 16 gigs of RAM, then you can always upgrade it afterwards, unless you're a creative professional, then maybe 32 would be better. And also the SSD, I would say go for the 512 gig one, the 256 is a bit stingy, terabyte is super expensive. And again, like the RAM, you can always upgrade this yourself. You may have seen my upgrade video for last year's XPS 15, where I changed out the Wi-Fi card, the RAM, the SSD, and it was really easy. But I am happy to say they finally got rid of that crappy old Intel Wi-Fi chip. Now we've got a killer two x two Wi-Fi six chip in this, which also comes with Bluetooth five. I always had trouble connecting my Bluetooth earphones to it. Now it's absolutely fine. So that is good. Oh, and also it seems they fixed one of my biggest issues with last year's model, and that was the power management system or whatever it was, because every time I'd close my laptop and think it would just go to sleep, I'd come back a few hours later and the battery would be completely drained. You could fix it by going into the settings and telling it to hibernate rather than sleep, but not ideal. Good news though is I've not experienced it with the new one, so it looks like they fixed it. 
Speakers are pretty good in this thing, although uh, always use the Max Audio app that's pre-installed. That just gives it a bit of a boost, although then turn that off if you're using the headphone jack. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Asus ROG Phone 2. I get so sick of hearing my own voice. So after all that, should you buy the new Dell XPS 15 7590? Well, it is a nice little upgrade. Webcam's fixed, Wi-Fi's fixed, the power sleep issue is fixed, the OLED screen is a nice option to have, and it's around 25% faster overall than last year's model. But it is also very expensive, and honestly, I think if you can find last year's 9750 model on sale, that's probably a better value option, especially as you can upgrade and fix most of the issues yourself. But I do still love this thing. I mean, there's more creator laptops than ever out there now. All good options that you can't really go wrong with, but I personally always find myself coming back to the XPS. It's just a great all-rounder, and while the design is looking a bit long in the tooth, and you should avoid the i9 processor, it's still one of the best laptops you can buy right now, and I do highly recommend it. So I've put a link to the model that I'd go for in the description below, and if you do want to find out more about the difference between ooh, the difference between the LCD and the OLED, then watch my video on exactly that by clicking this pop-out thing, which should be floating around here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you make of the XPS in the comments below, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.